Now we're going to do some work with exponents. Um, the very first problem uh, asks us to multiply two monomials together. But I'd like you to notice that there's just a dot right here between the x to the fifth times y to the second. And that's the same case here between the x and the y to the tenth, or even right here between the parentheses. And, and I just need you to remember, and I'm going to erase this in a minute, it doesn't matter if you take 2 times 3 times 4 in terms of order to get 6 times 4 is 24, or if you choose to take 3 times 4 and then multiply by 2. Um, multiplication can be done in any order, and you still get the same results. So while many of you wouldn't need to write this next step down, I'm going to show that the x's, x to the fifth times x, that's this x right here, can be put side by side because multiplication is commutative. And then the y to the second and the y to the tenth can be put side by side. I'm not distributing this. I'm just multiplying these factors together. And when I do, I add their exponents. So I'm hoping you recognize and remember that this x right here has an exponent of a 1 when it's not written. And then when you multiply, you add your exponents. So 5 and 1 is 6, and 2 and 10 is 12. When you raise a power to a power in part b here, everything gets raised to the third power. The 2 gets raised to the third power. The negative 5 and this 3, the shortcut now is to multiply those exponents. So that would be x to the negative 15. And then the 4 and the 3 would give us y to the 12. So raising a power to a power, um, we multiply those exponents. Even this 2, it has an exponent of a 1, and it's 1 times 3 is that 3 right there. Now, I do need to call the 2 to the third power 8, because it's 2 times 2 times 2. I do need to think of x to the negative 15th as 1 over x to the positive 15th, and the y to the 12th has a positive exponent, so it stays upstairs. A lot of people think that the 8 is connected with the x to the negative 15. It is not. It stays upstairs. So I have 8y to the 12th upstairs over x to the 15th downstairs. All done. Oh, and a really nice property of exponents is that if you have a quotient raised to a negative power, that you can flip that. So the 2y to the 3rd can go upstairs. The x to, to the 4th can go downstairs. And now you raise all of that to the positive 5th power. It's because uh, the original problem could be written as 1 over all of that stuff to the 5th, positive 5th. Well, that's the same thing as flipping it and raising it to the positive fifth. So now I'm going to go ahead and take 2 to the fifth. Um, y to the third raised to the fifth is y to the fifteenth because I multiply those exponents. And downstairs, x to the fourth raised to the fifth is x to the twentieth. And the only thing I need to remember to do is to either multiply out 2 times itself 5 times or take 2 and raise it to the 5th power on a calculator and get 32. So I would like you to do that. It, tell me that value over x to the 20th. Exponents, pretty challenging sometimes. A little bit more work with some negative exponents. Um, when there are, you know, I've got a monomial inside the parentheses in D here that's raised to the positive 2 power. I'm going to raise everything to the positive 2 power. So the 3 gets raised to the 2 power. The x to the 3rd, right there, when raised to that 2nd power becomes x to the 6th because 3 times 2 is 6. Why? The negative 2 times the positive 2 is a negative 4. And that is the only piece that gets moved downstairs. That y to the minus 4th is the same thing as 1 over y to the positive 4th. Only that gets moved downstairs. The 3 squared is 9. The x to the 6 stays upstairs. Just that y to the 4th goes down. 
E is much like the very first exponential problem. It's just two monomials times two monomials. And just for your sake of visual, I'm going to put the x to the seventh and x to the negative one side by side because I add exponents when I multiply. And I'm going to put the y to the second and the y to the fourth side by side because those bases are alike and I add their exponents. So 7 and a negative 1 adds to be 6 and 2 and 4 adds to be 6 and I'm all done. The directions to this problem say perform, perform the indicated operations this one is an addition problem asking you to add two polynomials. This one's a subtraction and then there is a plus five at the very end. So bottom line is I'm adding and subtracting and when I do that I have to collect my like terms. I do have to be careful when I subtract to add the opposite. Let's get rid of those. Um, so in the first problem I'm, I'm just looking for like terms. So for example, this 7x and that minus 9x are like terms, and I add their coefficients. That'll be a negative 2x. This minus 6 and that positive 7 are like terms. When I add those together, they'll be a positive 1. The 3x squared in the front here doesn't have any terms to be combined with, so I'm going to put that down. Again, this 7x and this minus 9x combine to be a minus 2x and that minus 6 and the plus 7 adds to be 1. A lot of people think they should do something else with this problem at this point. Um, you can't. Uh, it's done. This is like having three xylophones squared and then take away two regular old xylophones and then adding one. So x squared, the 3x squared, and the 2x are not like terms. While their variables are the same, the exponents are not the same. In this next problem, number 37, I'm going to see if I can get a 1 in here well. Uh, it's like asking, when I ask you to subtract, I'm asking you to multiply each of these terms by a minus 1, essentially. Or add the opposite. And then just drop the parentheses. So the 6a squared becomes a minus 6a squared. The minus 3a becomes a positive 3a, and the plus 2 becomes a minus 2. And those parentheses are gone now. And I really didn't even need the parentheses in the front polynomial, the four terms. It's just trying to show you that you're taking a polynomial and subtracted another one. And then don't forget the last five that was at the end of the problem. And then let's combine our like terms. So we have a 1a squared minus a 6a squared. Those are like terms. Remember, there's a 1 here. And 1 minus 6 is a negative 5a squared. Then uh, let's go in descending order. So let's now go with the minus 4a and a plus 3a. That's a minus 1a. You're welcome to put the 1. You don't need to put the 1. And then let's take this positive 12 and subtract 2. That'd be 10. And then add 5 to that. That would be 15. And I've collected all those constants as well. And I'm all done. Remember the directions to these problems said perform the indicated operations. And so number 38, 39, and 40 uh, were multiplying binomials. So we call that process uh, foiling, F-O-I-L. And FOIL stands uh, for the fact that I want to take the first terms and multiply them together. That would be the 2x times the 3x is 6x squared. The O in FOIL stands for the outer terms. I think that's two t's for outer. That means the 2x times the minus 1, that'll be a minus 2x. Those are the outside terms. Then the i in the word FOIL stands for inner. And so that means this minus 5 times 3x is a minus 15x. And L stands for last terms in the two binomials. That's the minus 5 times the minus 1. So when we say FOIL, it's because we're asking you to take two binomials and multiply the first, the outside, the inside, and the last terms together, and then combine your like terms. So 
let's go ahead and, and do that again. So 2x times 3x is 6x squared, and 2x times a minus 1 is a minus 2x. This minus 5 times 3x is a minus 15x, and a minus 5 times a minus 1 is a positive 5. And very often, especially in early algebra classes, the middle terms, the inside and the outside terms, um, are like terms, these two right here. They combine to be a minus 17x. So your final answer would be the 6x squared minus the 17x plus the 5. And we're all done. Let's do the same thing for number 39, and then I might erase the board a little bit to do number 40. So 5x times 4x is 20x squared. 5x times a minus 7 is a minus 28x. 4 times 4x is 16x. And 4 times a minus 7 is a minus 28. And we'll take these two middle terms that are like terms and add their coefficients. So they add to be a minus 12x. But don't forget to bring down your 20x squared minus this 12x minus the 28. We're all done there. Now the last problem. That one is, um, I'm going to go ahead and erase this first and then I'll come back and get the next. Number 40 means a binomial times the very same binomial. So what I would suggest you do is just write the 5t minus 3 down twice and FOIL it. Please, if you don't do this, you're likely to make a mistake. A lot of people will say that the answer to this is 5t squared, which is 5t times 20, uh, 5t is 25t squared, and 3 times 3 is a positive 9. A lot of people say that that's the answer to this problem, but that's not the case. You have to FOIL this binomial times itself, so you would get 25t squared. Just notice that these outside and these inside terms are like terms, and they have the same coefficient, so it's kind of like doubling them. And this minus 3 times this minus 3 is a positive 9. And now let's go ahead and collect these two to be a minus 30t. So my answer to this problem, in fact, is really 25t squared minus 30t plus 9. And look at the commonly mistaken answer that people gave me right here. They didn't have that minus 30t by writing it out twice.